The first few examples we want to take a look at will all deal with integration by substitution, meaning what we have is a composite function. So what we'll want to do is identify in each case that interior function, and we'll call that u. So in this case, we have 7x plus 7 is equal to u. And that will always be the beginning of our substitution process. From there, what we'll want to do is take the derivative of this substitution statement. So we'll find du dx, the derivative of this equation u with respect to x, which in this case will give us 7. And then we'll multiply that dx term to the other side, giving us the equation du equals 7 dx. If we look back at the original um, integral we're trying to evaluate, we'll see that we have that statement, 7 dx, contained as part of it. So what we can do is replace this 7 dx portion with du, since this equation tells us that those two quantities are exactly equal to each other. So essentially what we've done is made two substitutions, which will allow us to rewrite our integral as the integral of u squared du. So again, u is representing that 7x plus 7, and du comes about as a result of taking the derivative of both sides of that substitution statement. So now we're integrating with respect to u, and all we're integrating is u squared, so this would become u cubed over 3 plus some constant c. And then our very last step will just be to replace anywhere we have a u showing up in our final result with that statement that we substituted in initially. So rather than having u cubed, we'll have 7x plus 7 cubed. over 3 plus some quantity c to represent that infinite number of solutions for that indefinite integral. So we can take a look at another example here. Our process will start off the same. We'll identify the interior function, which in this case would be that 5x. So we'll let that equal u. We'll take the derivative of both sides which in this case will give us 5, so we'll get du equals 5dx when we multiply that dx term to the other side. We'll look at what's left over in our problem, which in this case is 5dx, which matches with our the result of our derivative statement here. So again, we could rewrite this in terms of our new substituted values. We could rewrite this as the integral of e to the u, and then in place of that 5dx, we can substitute in du. We know that the integral of e to the u will still just be e to the u plus some constant c. And then in our last step, we'll substitute back in what we substituted out originally. So we'll end up with e to the 5x plus some quantity c. So again, in each of these cases, we identify the interior function let u equal that interior function, take the derivative of both sides, and then rewrite our integral so now that it's entirely in terms of this new variable u. So as long as all of the x's have disappeared, everything's in terms of u, and the resulting integral is something that's much simpler to evaluate, we know that we're on the right track. So in example three, we want to consider the same idea. It might be a little bit more difficult to catch on to the, what the interior function is in this case, but we could consider this problem to be a variation of 1 over u. So what we have is the interior function in the denominator here. So we'll let that equal u. And then we'll take the derivative of both sides, which in this case we still get a variable left over. So du over dx will equal 10x, which means that du will equal 10x dx. So we have 10x dx, and we have 10x dx in the original problem. So we can swap that out for, not dv, but du, giving us a new integral, 
which will be the integral of 1 over u du. So 2 plus 5x squared was replaced with u, and then the 10x dx was replaced with du from that resulting derivative statement. The integral of 1 over u will be the natural log of the absolute value of x plus some constant c. And then again, we'll swap back in what we originally swapped out. So this will be the natural log of the absolute value of 2 plus 5x squared plus some constant c.